Hello, my name is Deborah Colson and this is a Nairobi Physic Garden. Welcome. It's a botanical garden and every single plant in here is a healing herb. And they all have their stories and their myths and their traditions and their folklore and their wisdom tales. For example, sage here is used for Men's, women's menstrual problems for sweating. It's very good for the brain, as in the word sage, which means wisdom. And it's also used, as is rosemary here, for um, cooking. Well, obviously they taste delicious, but they're also very good, and there is a reason, because they help digest the fat of, say, lamb and pork. And I hope that this today will help you connect to plants and the garden and this is my story. My journey into botanical gardens started when I was very small. In Brazil we had a house up in the mountains and with a big garden and um, my parents' gardener was a local herbalist and everybody came to him for herbs. So my memories of plants and gardenings um, make me happy because it's cozy and happy. And um, my mother was a gardener and she loved plants and vegetables and fruits and flowers and was a fantastic cook as was my maternal grandmother in England and then on my father's side of the family um, he had a paint factory into which cashew shell liquid used to go and castor oil and so he then had a farm, a huge farm, that grew cashew trees and in the middle he was um, growing other plants while the cashew trees matured. So on both sides my ancestors were into plants for food, medicine, industry, agriculture and flowers for beauty and happiness. I used to be a photographer and I love colour and shape, it's probably what I do best. And uh, I then thought it wasn't hands-on enough, so I saw an advertisement for a diploma in garden design in the school in London, which I took the diploma, I did it. And um, I started doing gardens, I did a lot here. And then I gradually started becoming interested in the herbs, in the herbal medicine, plants that do things. I'd go on safari and people would take me and show me Samburu, Maasai, Pakot, whatever, their local traditions, and that was so much more interesting. So it's much easier now um, to get information about the medicinal plants. And it's fun going to get the local plants because you go foraging in the bush. Like I've got there some St. John's wort, which is widely used for depression. We have our indigenous one that I took from Lake Rotundu on Mount Kenya. By the way, I just have to say that I never take more than two plants when I'm collecting in the bush. So that's how I started down that route. Herbal medicine in this country has been frowned upon um, by the colonials, by the church. You know, they were not supportive of it. So people have been very shy. I'm not sure it wasn't even made illegal. People have, were very shy in those days. Now everyone's got much more confident and taking their heritage and proud of their culture. Just for your interest, the World Health Organization says that 80% of people use herbs as their primary medicine. 40% of over-the-counter drugs are made from plants and the top 20 in America best-selling prescription drugs are made from plants. So I don't need approval but I find that very interesting. For hundreds and thousands of years the people have been using herbal medicine. Now if they were making a tea or something with rosemary, I'm talking about in England, Rosemary is good for the brain, rosemary for remembrance, it also stimulates you, okay? Now, how do they know that? Nowadays, the scientists are making experiments and everything those old wives, as we call them, old wives' tales, everything they said, the herbalist mamas, 
were accurate, spot on. And I find that fascinating. Everybody's much more interested in health and natural health. And I think people are sick of chemicals. It's extraordinary how the old and the young, everybody I come in contact with, men and women, and you know, all the races we have here, everybody's interested. And abroad, I've got people saying, can you send them abroad? You know, and they like the products people want because everything, this garden is completely organic and the herbal med, the dudu dawa, the insect repellent is all made from plants growing around here. There's no chemicals, this is completely organic and everything I make is completely organic and people love that and they're fascinated. I'm not very businesslike so I haven't made much money but I have had a couple of people recently saying I'll help you take this and run with it. It could be a big thing, but I'm actually more interested in the plants than getting into a business of making lotions and potions. In my experience, it's all connected. The, this is a botanical garden to show people what is possible. Everything else is just sort of value added. You know, whether I'm making a tincture, which is a plant soaked in alcohol, so that's more serious dawa medicine, um, than an ointment or a tea. It's all just a sort of circle of life, a connection um, with the plants and people and hopefully making some money. I'm not very businesslike, so I haven't made much money at all, but that doesn't matter. It's just getting the word out and getting the energy moving. And it is. People love it and they're fascinated. I have 200, well, probably between 250 and 300 different species of plants here, half indigenous, half exotic. And everybody knows the exotic plants, the parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. And the botanical gardens that I'm in touch with are really interested in the indigenous plants. Apparently I've got 40 plus plants here that have never been uploaded onto any websites. So there is so much, and I'm only just learning, that you can do with the plants here obviously you know it is medicine it is food and I have different people coming here Kenyans who go oh my grandmother used to make a tea for that when I was sick or my mother would make me a soup or my grandfather you know everybody has a story about the different use of plants like here for example we got nettles urtica masaika as in Maasai and there's a much more Kali strong than the English ones which I grew up learning about and they are highly medicinal very good for your kidneys and you can make a soup and um, it's full of minerals you know most people go yeah you know it's gonna sting me and um, the in the war the Second World War the Ministry of War put out a cookbook because people were so poor they didn't you know just sort of showing them how to use the land and they gave a, a nettle soup recipe so and I made that and it was delicious so and you can use nettle tea as well very good for flushing out the kidneys diuretic you know there are so many uses of plants that haven't been experimented with much scientific experiments in designing this garden as I am a designer and I like color and shape and was a photographer first desi the design is always such fun I love it and I've done this in concentric circles it doesn't have to be in a shape you can just have it growing around your garden with paths through it some of the most famous gardens in England have no design at all um, I've done them in concentric circles, which means wholeness and connection and continuity. This is sacred geometry when all shapes have meaning. And for example, a circle is feminine, a square is masculine, a squared circle is balance, a triangle is fire, is dynamic, and a spiral is the shape of everything in the universe from the way a fern unfolds to the way the planets move. So there's all that fun to be had. Anyway, I did my circles. And if you think of a drop of rain on a pond or a drop of water, it'll start making concentric circles, which shows that everything is interconnected and everything we do impacts on everything else. 
And this is what is so important from the bigger picture of showing people the importance of nature. And I'm doing it through plants. On paper, this is the bird's eye view of what the garden looks like. Down here we have the daisy bed and then the mint bed. The indigenous beds are up at the top in the north and then in the middle are the beds by diseases. Head, skin, lungs, immune, digestion, anxiety, cancer, heart and the middle one is calm and here is the key at the bottom. And I've done them in concentric circles because it represents wholeness and it is a natural shape. If you think this looks a bit scruffy, it's because I want it to look. I don't want it to look all scientific and box-like. If you see a plant growing over the front, I like that because it's natural and it's a sort of fairy tale, it's magical garden. But I don't like to going into the next door beds so they won't strangle each other. So there is method in my madness here. I want everything to be as lush as possible but not growing into each other's beds. As far as challenges are concerned, I haven't really seen any because I think I'm a little bit reticent to go down the business side. As far as creating the garden, I love it. I've had no funding and it would be nice to have a bit more to do some more, but that's not a challenge, that's just a thing of time. And um, my challenge is the business side. You know, because I don't like that and I'm not strong on that. This is not a challenge, this is pure joy. Going forward, I would like, I'm trying to get, a, well, I'm about to get accreditation with um, botanical gardens, various institutions. So just because it would be nice to have a little somebody stamp on my card and my website. And um, I want to make it bigger. I want more people to know about it. I will be doing a book. I would like to do more films to get, just to get the knowledge out. It's so exciting and such fun. And it's been proven, and we know that, we don't need to read it, um, that if you're walking in a field or in nature, you're gonna feel so much better than if you're walking in a cement shopping center in Dubai with neon lighting. You know, they call that phytotherapy. Nature, heal, plants, phyto and therapy, plants healing us, and they do. Plants can live without us, but we can't live without them. This is an artichoke. Isn't it amazing? As well as being delicious, it's very good for the liver and for the blood and for cholesterol, and apparently it's got anti-cancer properties. And that's my story. As a herbologist, a plant enthusiast, a producer of plant healing products and a farmer. What's yours? Share it.